In this video, we're going to test your conceptual understanding of our basic definitions for one-dimensional motion. First, let's just review what we talked about in the last video. Here are the basic definitions for one-dimensional motion. We said displacement is the final position minus the initial. We then defined average velocity as the displacement per time. Then we defined the instantaneous velocity. And remember, by the way, that a bar means average. If there's no bar, it's an instantaneous value, meaning a value at a particular time. We said that the instantaneous velocity is the derivative of position versus time. And that simply means it's the slope of the position versus time graph at a particular time. Remember this notation is simply a shorthand way of writing that the instantaneous velocity is really defined as the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta x over delta t. So the instantaneous velocity is the limit of the average velocity as delta t goes to zero. We also define the average acceleration and the instantaneous acceleration, again, remembering that this is a shorthand notation for a limit. Position, displacement, and velocity and acceleration are all vectors. In one dimension, that simply means that we use plus and minus to keep track of the direction. So if an object starts out at one place and ends up to the left of where it started, its displacement would be negative. If an object is moving to the left, its velocity would be negative. Let's look at this question. We have an object moving to the left and speeding up. What is the sign of the average acceleration? So do you think the acceleration is positive or negative in this case? You might pause the video and just think about it a little bit, and then we'll go over it. OK, to help us go over it, I'm going to first draw, draw out the situation. My object is going to be a person. And I'm just going to make up some numbers that correspond with the question. So our person is moving to the left, and they're speeding up. Therefore, I'm going to say that their initial velocity is negative 10 meters per second. Again, just making this up, because they're moving to the left. And I'm going to say that happens at a time of 10 seconds. So that's the time on my stopwatch when this happens. Now, later on, at a time when the time has now been 20 seconds, let's say their velocity is negative 20 meters per second. So notice our person is moving to the left and they are speeding up. Well, notice we can calculate what the average acceleration is. It's just delta t, or sorry, delta v over delta t. And the final velocity is negative 20. Then I want to subtract the initial velocity, which is negative 10. Divide by delta t, so the final time, which is 20 seconds, minus the initial time, which is 10. And you'll notice that I get a acceleration of negative 1 meters per second squared. Therefore, the acceleration was negative. One of the things you're going to notice is when an object is speeding up, the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction. So if it's speeding up to the left, the velocity is getting more and more negative. Well, therefore, since acceleration is just how the velocity is changing per second, remember, meters per second per second, it makes sense that the acceleration has to be negative, because every second that goes by, the velocity becomes more negative. Probably a better way to look at this is to do a graph. So let's graph velocity versus time. v1 was negative 10, and that occurred at t1. So here's t1, v1. And then t2 was 20 seconds, and v2 was negative 20. And so you'll notice that those are the two points on our graph. And what we get is a line that looks like this. 
Remember, the slope of the velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. And we can see that the slope is negative, and therefore, the acceleration is negative. Let's take a look at another question. Moving to the right and slowing down, what is the sign of the average acceleration? Go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can figure it out. Let's look at it together. Let's look at it with the same two ways that we looked at the last one. I'm first going to just make up some numbers. Let's say that the initial velocity of my person, since it's moving to the right, I know it's positive. So let's say, I don't know, 20 meters per second. And let's say that happens at a time t1 of 5 seconds. And then later on, the person is still moving to the right, but their velocity has to be less because they're slowing down. Let's say that v2 is equal to 10 meters per second. And let's say that that occurs at a time t2 equal to 10 seconds. To calculate the average acceleration, I'm just going to take delta v over delta t. So I get 10 minus 20 divided by 10 minus 5. And you'll notice that that gives me an acceleration of negative 2 meters per second squared. So again, what does that mean? It means that for every second that went by, the velocity decreased by 2 meters per second. Notice that it makes sense that the acceleration is negative here because the velocity is positive, but we're slowing down, so we're taking away. And therefore, the acceleration has to be negative. We're losing 2 meters per second of velocity for every second that goes by. Again, we can look at this with a graph of v versus t. At t1, our velocity was 20. And at t2, our velocity was 10. And what we see again is that the slope of our graph is negative, And therefore, the acceleration is negative. To summarize what we've learned, what we know is that if the magnitude of the velocity is increasing, so whether it's increasing in the positive or negative direction, the velocity and the acceleration are going to have the same sign. So moving to the left and speeding up, both a and v have to be negative. Moving to the right and speeding up, both a and v will be positive. On the other hand, if the magnitude of the velocity is decreasing, then the acceleration and the velocity will have opposite signs because they're in opposite directions. So moving to the right and slowing down, velocity is positive, acceleration is negative. Moving to the left and slowing down, velocity is negative, acceleration is positive. Let's go through some multiple choice questions. The first question, if the acceleration is zero, what does that tell you about the velocity? I encourage you for each of these questions to pause the video, answer it, and then listen to my answer. Well, the correct answer is C. The velocity must be constant or zero. We know that average acceleration is delta V over delta T. or instantaneous acceleration is the derivative of v with respect to t. In either case, what we notice is there must be a change in the velocity to get an acceleration. So if the acceleration is zero, it's simply telling you 
that there is no change delta V or dV. And therefore, the velocity needs to be constant. Now, being zero is simply a, a special case of being constant. But a constant velocity means no acceleration. Try this one. If an object is moving to the right and slowing down, what are the signs of the velocity and the acceleration? Hopefully you got this one right since we just talked about it. The correct answer is A. First of all, as soon as we see that the object is moving to the right, that tells us that V is positive. So right away, we can get rid of C and D. And now, we have to pay attention to the fact that it's slowing down. When it's slowing down, the acceleration is in the opposite direction. Again, how do we know that? Well, the easiest way to remember it is plot a graph. Moving to the right means it's a positive velocity. Slowing down means the graph would look something like this. And we see that the slope is negative and therefore the acceleration is negative. Another one. If an object is moving to the left and slowing down in that direction, what are the signs of the velocity and the acceleration? Okay, well, hopefully you got this one right. First of all, moving to the left, that tells us that V is negative, okay? That means that right away we can get rid of those two answers. And now we've just got to pick between the two. Again, I strongly encourage you to draw a graph of V versus T to make sure you're thinking about it right. So we're moving to the left and we're slowing down. That means that initially the velocity is more negative than it's going to be later on. So let's say, you know, our velocity was negative 10 and it slows down to something like negative 2. Well, if we look at that graph, we can see that the slope is positive and therefore the acceleration is positive. Okay, so these can be tricky, but if you draw the graph and think about it that way, you'll get the problem right. How about this one? I throw a ball up in the air. Which of these statements is true for the ball when it's at the highest point? Go ahead and pause the video and think it through. Let's look at this together. The most common answer when I ask this in class is A, that the velocity is zero and the acceleration is zero. That is not right. Because think about it, if at the top the velocity is zero and the acceleration is zero, what would the ball have to do? It would have to stay there. Because when you tell me the acceleration is zero, you're telling me the velocity isn't changing. So if the velocity is zero and it's not changing, the object would just sit there. And obviously that's not what happens. So how, how can we think this through? Well, you're probably getting the sense by now that graphs are important. Let's draw a graph of V versus T for the simple case of throwing a ball up in the air. We know what the ball does. It goes up, gets to a maximum height, and then it comes back down. So when I throw the ball up, when it leaves my hand, that's when it has the greatest velocity. We know that at the top, it has a velocity of zero. And then it's coming down, so the velocity is getting more and more negative. If I connect those dots, what I find is that I get a linear graph. And that, in fact, is what the velocity looks like as a function of time when you throw an object straight up in the air. Well, notice, since the acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph, we can see a couple important things. The acceleration is negative and it's constant. So that even right here, 
where the velocity is zero, the slope of the velocity versus time graph is not zero. It's a negative constant. Those of you who have taken physics before might remember that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's what that means, that when you plot V versus T for an object in, you know, just going up and down in the air, the slope of the V versus T graph is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's try this question. At what points is the object moving to the left? Notice that we're given a graph of position versus time with different points along the graph numbered. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you come up with. The correct answer is D. How do we know that? We know that the object is moving to the left. And when we know an object is moving to the left, that tells us that the velocity is negative. Now, we know that the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph at a particular time. So what we're looking for is where is the slope negative. That's what we're looking for. You'll notice that at point one, if I draw a tangent to that point, we can see that definitely has a negative slope. A tangent at point two is definitely negative. Notice the slope at point three is zero, so that's where the object isn't moving. And then at point four and point five, the slopes are positive. That would be moving to the right. And therefore, the answer is D, points one and point two. Try this question. Where is the acceleration equal to zero? Notice that we're plotting velocity versus time. Okay, well, hopefully you got that the answer is C. Remember that the acceleration is the slope of V versus T. And so we're looking for where is the slope of this graph? Zero. And notice that that's at point three. By the way, notice where the acceleration is zero has nothing to do with where the velocity is zero. Here's where the velocity is zero. Both at point two and point four, the velocity is zero. But when we're trying to figure out the acceleration from a velocity versus time graph, what we're looking for is where is the graph flat? Where is the slope equal to zero?